tell us about Krista and how she plays into the night shift world. Okay, so Krista is a first year resident, and um, during the pilot is like my very first day on the shift. And uh, so in my world, Krista has been like dying to do the night shift, uh, the specifics trauma ward, and that TC and Topher are sort of her idols, you know. And so I come in um, wide-eyed in some ways, in the sense that you know there's there's definitely that that feeling like I'm going to save absolutely everyone, and and um, I'm very meticulous with my procedure, and so I pick up everything very quickly. So in that sense, like Chris is a bit of a, a rock star resident. Um, and then as the show goes on, it's discovered more and more that she has definitely a vulnerable side, that there's definitely uh, emotional attachments that she can develop and, and is easily hurt and things like that. But for the most part, she really puts up a front of, um, and not always a front, but she's very comfortable kind of like hanging out with the boys and cracking jokes and, and being a bit of a tough girl. Does she kind of fit into the weird camaraderie they've kind of established there? Oh, for sure. Yeah, so Krista's often, like, especially for the first bunch of episodes, the only girl with a group of boys. And <laughs> we're all joking around. And well, how much fun is that as an actress? <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> because I, I really, like, until the, the more recent episodes, like, a lot of what I've been doing is more comic. And so it's just, like, we're just joking around. And, 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 and you know, it's, it is part of our job to be really goofy when we're not shooting. <laughs> I like to think, because then that keeps us loose for all of the work that we actually do on camera. Yeah. So yeah, we, we, we goofy around quite a bit. So I've heard conflicting reports. Owen's either a live wire or he's kind of the straight guy. What would you describe him as? As a character or as a person? Person. <laughs> as a person? Well, he's like the rest of us. We're all, uh, I think we're, we're a good group together. There was actually one day where we sat down and, and read a list of what true characteristics of an introvert are, which is definitely the ability. But it's, it's um, well, the, the main characteristic that we all really related to was the the need for genuine communication and authentic communication. So there's very little phoniness in our group. And there is no human being that can spend 17 hours a day with a group of people and not go through periods of withdrawal so, or needing to withdraw. And so all of us have that. And Owen's definitely that person too, where he's very gregarious and very like, you know, excitable and exciting. <laughs> and then has moments where he really just needs to keep to himself. And that's all of us. And that's what's great is that we really understand that about each other. And we just all get along very, very well. There's, no conflict that I know of. Can you guys switch it off on a dime just to go into those real serious scenes you guys do in the ER? Well, for myself personally, there's definitely emotional prep. When it's just procedural specifically, then for me, I, I have a zone of hyper-focus that I kind of click into. I don't need to prep that much for that. But specifically emotional scenes, I think all of us go through our own process of how to find that place. Yeah, just because now I've talked to a bunch of you and you all seem a little bit happy and excitable. <laughs> I'm like, how do you turn that down? Yeah. <laughs> We don't. We just, like, if anything, it escalates when we're around each other. We just get, like, you know, some goofy stuff that happens, yeah. That's so cool. Because, again, it's a, it's a fairly serious show for the most part. I mean, even with the moments of levity in there. Yeah, it is. Well, I mean, that's the thing that I love about our show is that you can sit down and read a script and, and laugh, out, laugh out loud um, and then be crying the next minute. So as serious as the show is, there's a, I mean, the levity is, is um, it strikes home. It's just pure, pure levity when it comes to that. What would you say would be like the typical or typifies the perfect Krista scene? That we've actually done? Yeah. Wow. That's all just a blur. So right. I have a really big scene coming up today, so like I have to put myself somewhere else right now. Give me a second. Perfect Krista scene. Well, I mean, not necessarily my absolute favorite scene, but I have a lot of fun, which is that someone pulls a prank on me. And I go through a moment of embarrassment, but I don't hesitate to immediately kind of roll with the punch. And, and as soon as I, uh, you know, kind of like throw the, the prank a little bit back in the face of the person who pranked me, boom, something crazy, insanely like traumatic and medical happens. And then we all have to run and like take care of this person. And so it goes from having a serious conversation with somebody to being pranked to then kind of being like, well, so what? Yeah, screw you. And then like, oh my God, someone's dying. I've got to save them. All in one scene. In like, in like three minutes. It's not even a long scene. So that's a real adrenaline rush. Yeah. So that for me, it like characterizes Krista, but also the show itself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've heard JR describe himself as a bit of a prankster. Is he like the biggest one? He is the biggest prankster. <laughs> and so Kenny and Krista definitely like to pull pranks together. That's, that's one of the things that we do. <laughs> Are you like bugging the writers? We've got to do more pranks. <laughs> no, we don't even have to. They, they just give it to us. It doesn't, doesn't require much prodding for that. Did you see that when you were reading the first script? Did you think, oh, my character's going to have this real strong, funny side? 
you know, it didn't really occur to me. I, I just sort of, uh, I sort of rolled with it. It all happened so fast. I don't know if you heard about how quickly the show was cast. They, I mean, the, the showrunners are really incredible people who've been in the business for a long time and who are really just good human beings in general and have an, I mean, what we all figured out when they cast this was like, they basically hired a bunch of people who could become best friends. I don't know how they did it, but they, it's like they selected, like this person would be your best friend, Jeanne, and this person could be your best friend. I think we should all put you guys together. And so that, you know, um, I totally lost the question, what you were asking. <laughs> it's okay. They, they were kind of working off a wish list, it looked like, because when I looked down the list of people starring on the show, I was like, oh my gosh, you just kind of cherry-picked out these actors off other shows. <laughs> <laughs> it all worked out. There's no there's no major egos. There's no, uh, no nobody who's, who's needing anything other than genuine, like, human interaction and good creative stuff to put themselves in. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What do you think the audience is going to fall in love with? Um, I think just the fact that the whole gamut of emotions that you're all going to get put through. The audience is going to feel all of those wonderful, heady things that I think people watch television for. Um, and, at the, and, and also, at the same time, just, j like, just love the people that are on the show. They're all really easy to look at. <laughs> um, never had They're all good-hearted. They're all flawed in a, in a good way. You know what I mean? There's no, nobody's perfect on this show, um, and, and nobody's evil. And everybody um, is so different. To have nine characters on a show and have no overlap and have everyone get along with each other is pretty remarkable. So I think it's going to be, like, in some ways, I think, if I were to watch it, I would be drawn to it like the way I used to be drawn to watching Friends, you know? Just watching a group of people who really care about each other and then go through the, the pitfalls and the, the ups and downs of, of life in, in a hospital setting. So you still get all the procedural stuff and all the <laughs> interpersonal romantic drama. <laughs> you said Krista was drawn to the this particular night shift at this particular hospital because of TC. What is she hoping to learn from him? Um, that sort of uh, the fearlessness, right, of, of uh, just doing whatever it takes to save someone's life. And he, he was kind of like the one person she's just picked out and said, that's the guy. And Topher. For and me, Topher. I very much picked Topher, you know. TC's a bit more hot-headed. Like, TC and Topher are an incredible odd couple. They they wouldn't be able to do what they do if it wasn't for each other kind of thing. And so when, when Krista comes in, I mean, this isn't in the writing. This is something I've just chosen for myself. That, um, you know, that they really were role models, both of them. Because, you know... TC's willingness to break rules and Topher's ability with diplomacy and both of their actual skill set in as practitioners was what brought me there. I like kind of the rogue mentality. You know, I didn't want to be in some conventional hospital. <laughs> <laughs> so she just really wants to find something that's out of the box that's going to really appeal to how she wants to do medicine. Right, which is very much like I want to be, to learn how to give myself permission to, to do what I know is right. Chris is about justice. And so are those men, so. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you.